Now, because I'm um, the kind of guy I am, I couldn't resist having a look inside this, uh, this new welder of mine. And there is indeed quite a lot to look at. Now, uh, I'm not uh, an electrical expert, electronics expert, but I took it yesterday to a friend of mine who is, a guy who really knows his stuff. And uh, between us, we uh, found one or two things that could just do with modifying. Now, I find with a lot of this Chinese gear, uh, it's budget stuff. It probably cost a tenth of what a, a European-made thing would cost. But for all its failings, all the components are normally there with which you can uh, make a good one. Um, PCBs all seem well made, quality items, uh, just a few assembly issues really. Now for want of something better to call it, there's a, a spark jumpy kind of a thing uh, down there with adjustable points. Um, I think it's for the high frequency start. Now this welder is working perfectly, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so I measured the gap between the adjustable points with the feeler gauges and uh, the gap is currently 28 thou. So that's something handy to know um, in case it stops working or in case anybody else has one that doesn't work. PCBs in an ideal world could probably do with a little bit of extra support. Now, we don't like the uh, on-off switch from the mains power. Uh, it doesn't really seem up to the job. And we also don't like the uh, little spade terminals that hold it on. I uh, think something really a bit more substantial could be used for that at both ends, down the PCB and on the switch. So uh, when and if the switch does fail, uh, they will be getting changed. On the outside of the machine, there are fairly significant uh, connectors for the uh, output power. But when you look inside the machine, uh, the cable lugs for the uh, output power, and there are probably half a dozen or more of them, uh, very weedy things made out of copper. Uh, they're probably uh, too large for the cable that they crimped onto, and they really don't look like quality things at all and they say 100 amps on them. I don't think you can see that. Uh, why you would have 100 amp lugs on a 200 amp welder, I don't know. I will be replacing those and probably um, upgrading the red and black cables. And I will also be replacing the six millimeter steel nuts, uh, washers and bolts that hold the things on. Um, because it's brand new, the washers are going rusty already, and uh, so are some of the nuts. So I will be replacing those with brass ones. Uh, we checked that both fans work, and indeed they do, uh, so that's good because uh, this machine doesn't have a warning light uh, for a faulty fan, uh, which would be a good addition. If you poke about inside a thing like this, uh, do be careful because those capacitors need discharging and there may well be other things in there uh, that bite, even when it isn't plugged in. There's a bit on the internet about these uh, copper bars on the top of this PCB being uh, bridged by careless soldering, as indeed this one is. Uh, and I was going to do something about it, uh, but Alistair pointed out to me yesterday that they're all going into the same copper foil within the uh, PCB and they're just a means of carrying more current uh, than the, the copper foil is able to. Uh, so the fact that they're bridged doesn't matter in the slightest. And when you put the lid back on, uh, make sure you put it on the right way around because it would go either way and the cooling vent should be at the front of it so that the fans can uh, draw the cooling air through the machine.